we're going to go over some of the basics of mapping a PDF document. Uh, a couple quick pointers. Uh, the PDF mapping is done in an output step. Uh, the output steps are anything that says PDF output. Um, you don't need to worry about the process steps all that much for mapping. And the web forms will also be helpful. But uh, all of your work is going to be done in the PDF output steps which in the specific step will be mentioned within the task that you'll be working in. For this tutorial, we're going to focus on mapping one of the endorsements. So we're going to go to the endorsement PDF step. This step lists all the documents that can be generated in this PDF output. You'll find the name of the document here. Uh, the include column determines whether or not uh, the document is always shown or if there are some conditional to where the form only shows at certain times and those would be set in this conditional variable value column but as far as mapping goes you won't need to worry about that to edit the document you'll go to select the document that you want to edit and click the edit data maps link and that will take you to an image of the document that you're going to be edit or adding the data maps to. To add a new data map, click the add new map button. You'll get a little box here showing you what the data map is. A couple of quick standard things to point out. Our standard height for a single line data map is always 12 and our alignment was always middle. This can change for a multi-line data map. For instance, if you had a mailing address or insured address, uh, the height would obviously be something significantly larger than 12. That's just our standard for um, single line data maps. A couple other things. The X value is the horizontal position of your data map. The Y value is the vertical position of your data map. And then you have the width and the height, which you can either increase by typing a number into, directly into the field or by going to the corner and dragging and making the box as big as you or as small as you want. Um, as far as placing the data maps, you can move them using these values if you want. But uh, it is much easier to grab the data map and then drag it into place. Uh, so the one we're about to add here will be the insured name. Um, some of the variables, most of the variables are pretty intuitive. In this case, as I mentioned, this is the insured name. Uh, names can be long, so we try to make those uh, pretty long here. So we'll drag it across the screen to select the variable. This determined the variable is the factor that pulls the value to the data map. Uh, so you'll click in this var value field and you can start typing. Like I said, most of them are intuitive. So if you need to, you know, if you think you might know what it is, name of insured, just start typing name. You'll see that it's going to populate every variable that has the word name in it. In this case, we're looking for the insured name. So type in insured underscore name. The reason for the underscore is our variables do not allow us to have spaces. So the underscore takes the place of a space. You can see when I type in insured name, we have the insured name show up right there. That's one of the more easy ones. Um, some that might be a little bit more difficult would be this effective date right here. Uh, this is actually the effective date of the policy, so it's a little bit more straightforward. Uh, so we'll click on, let me just take a step back. So we're going to add another data map. So click the Add Data Map button. You'll notice that it puts this data map using the exact same dimensions, the exact same formatting in the place of your most recent data map. We can now drag that data map into pl to the place we want to put it. Again, we're looking for the effective date. And this doesn't need to be that long. We can actually put it at 75. And you'll see it shortens it. You can also use your little right and 
left arrow keys and up and down to move as well. Um, another pointer for data maps, we have a format drop down. Uh, we have none, which is just no formatting whatsoever. Uh, text would be something you would use if it's just a straight text field, no numbers. Uh, in those cases, I always recommend to use none. The currency field is a currency without a dollar sign. When you select the currency field, it will give you a field to enter the number of decimals. We always use, most of the time, we use two decimals for our currency. Uh, date is what we'll use for dates. You'll never use a date time for a date. Multi-line is something that's going to be more than one line. Like I said, an address or something where they're entering a description. Number is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, yes, no's are a little bit more in-depth. I'll go over those in a separate tutorial. In this case, we're doing a date. So we'll select the date. Again, this is the effective date of the policy. Our variable for effective date, most of the time, is going to be date underscore effective. So again, start typing that into the value box. You'll see here we have all these effective dates. For the policy effective date, it's most of the time going to be date effective or effective underscore date. So select that and click the create map button. And you'll see it goes ahead and creates that data map. Moving on to something a little bit more tricky, uh, down here, all these are various endorsements that the user can do. These are variables you may not know off the top of your head. What I recommend is to go to the web form directly before the PDF output step that you're editing or within the same process. So if you're looking for endorsement variables, look in the endorsement process or endorsement web forms to find those variables. In this case, I've got another tab open. So if we go to the endorse web form, there's a good chance we'll be able to find the value that we're looking for and the variable for that value. For instance, if we're looking for increase ordinance or law, go back to that endorse web form, do a control find, and start typing in increase ordinance. And there you see it's already found it. Here's the variable we're Here's the field. This particular endorsement process shows a before and after kind of view. So this increase ordinance or law old is your before. The PDF shows the after. So we actually want to scroll down and you'll see here again we have increase ordinance or law without the old. That's the variable that we are looking for in this case. So you'd come back to your document, click the add new data map, Drag that data map into place. Again, you'll notice it's set the format to date because that's the last format we used. You need to set that back to none. And then type in that variable that we saw on the prior page. And click the select there, create data map. We'll do one more. So let's add new data map. We're looking for the replacement cost on contents. So go back to get it all lined up, go back to your web form, search for replacement cost on contents. Again, the first instance on the endorsement page, this isn't going to be the case for everything else, just on these endorsements, is not the one we're looking for. So search for it again. There you have it, replacement cost on contents. So go back to your PDF editor and type in that variable that you found on the prior page and select and create and that is how you do the data mapping within our platform